Hey, it's great to visit you. Oh, that light, the weird smell of your dinner. How have you been? Birds chirping, a bus, a barking dog, a screaming neighbourhood child. The kettle boiling, someone closing a door. What's been happening with you? The prickly texture of the couch. The washing machine running. The bitter taste of your brand of tea. The temperature, normal for you, that burns my mouth. Oh. Want to show Want me, to your, show dog? me your dog? Someone, Someone with a sour, sour scent of grass. Oh, your dog had to go to the vet. Dishwasher going, the electrical hum of the fridge. California dreaming, California dreaming. On a winter's day, on a winter's day. Oh, his paw, oh, his paw. an infection, the heater turning on. Air blowing on me like fingernails down a blackboard. Your kids tipping out the Lego box and squabbling. The itchy tag on my clothing. Your text messages, my text messages. The washing machine deafening and vibrating into pain. And here's Beverly O'Connor with another ABC News update. Oh, do I look as though I'm miles away? Sorry. The poem Sensory Processing Disorder by Esther Ottaway was a really pivotal point in the processing of this collective body of work because it meant that someone else like got it. I want to note that it's not a spectrum that's, you know, from one end to another like a ruler. It's very much a spectrum of colour. And I think that kind of plays into why I've used such dynamic colours in this body of work. So what I set out to do was create 10 pieces of work. The yarn, I suppose, is what really sparked the project. These artworks really explore how we are combating climate crisis, then in turn a pandemic as well, and how we all might be becoming more sensitive. This project started when I was working as an artist in residence with Beck and Tristan at their studio, Relative Creative. And I was working on a protest art piece for Yarn 2048, projecting ourselves to that date and what that means. When people are looking at Melissa's art, I would really hope that they're looking at that big date, 2048, and really thinking about what that means and how we're going to get there and then starting to break down the rest of the map which talks about a bleached reef and living coral and how that's playing out into the future as well and what actions we're taking now to either further damage the in this case the reef or to save it first and foremost we're talking about climate change and we want people to open discussion about how we can manage and work towards a greener future. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Come on in. Thank you. Oh, wow. I think art plays a really important role in creating new narratives around climate change. My name's Beck Anderson. I'm a textile artist and designer, and I live and work on Tambourine Mountain. In my studio here, I design and produce hand-tufted rugs from 100% New Zealand wool. The wool I dye by hand in the boilers on the veranda. So wool really lends itself to making rugs that are durable, functional and long wearing. It's used in rugs for many years, it's from a sheep's back, it's used to the rain, it's used to wear and tear. The session today with Beck Anderson I think confirmed a lot of things for me in regards to how I use and manipulate the yarn. It was good to speak with another artist that uses the same material. So I brought some little sample pieces of what we had last time to uh -huh. match some colours, hopefully. Citric lemon, so that's this one. We can do that again. Beautiful. And you need how many? Four, I think four probably balls? four of that one. Okay, so I'll put that down. What do you think makes people keep coming back to wool as a material? I think the physicality of the, the tactile, mm. of holding the wool and working with the wool. It's a meditative thing, it's a feeling of that yarn travelling through the hands. Not like paint on a brush where you're detached from the canvas mm. with a brush, you're holding it in your hands and you're working yeah. with it like that. Um, and maybe that's what's so special about textiles is that it is so flexible. I 
didn't set out to make these artworks in a pandemic. In a way, they've become even more relevant because it's made people take more time, I suppose, to, to understand their brains a bit more because they've had the time to do so and made them stop and think about how we are treating our environment and, and ourselves. something like a rally or something with a lot of people. Um, I tend to get a bit overwhelmed with that whole situation and because of the sensitive nature of the topic and I suppose how emotionally reactive it can be, I sort of chose to work in the studio that day but I definitely was there in spirit and working on this uh, piece. Always one, always a lot of the time I, I do try and shield myself from the harshness of what's going on because it can get a bit upsetting and it can sort of bog you down and you need to have a level of get up and go in order to be able to do this kind of stuff and create work that's meaningful. My practice for some years has always been revolving around self-identity, selfhood, um, the act of becoming or belonging somewhere so it's been great to be able to navigate through this project that's focusing on climate change and how we'll all be coming more highly sensitive in a way that we might not have foreseen because our society is being shielded by maybe not fully understanding climate change or being allowed to or not wanting to and how we combat that is sort of up to us and how we band together as, as a community. For me, um, one of the things that I feel like mapping helps is to understand you kind of can't do everything so you get a view of that relationality in the bigger picture but you also recognize that the picture is just so big how do you start picking so um, one of the things i really like thinking about is the idea of digging where you stand so where are you right now what can you achieve and it's sort of like a two-part zone in terms of like talking about highly sensitive people and their encounters, but then also talking about how everyone might be feeling more sensitized, like, you know, with the pandemic and climate crisis, bushfires, like there's so many changes that are occurring. How, how are people navigating that and are they comfortable? Um, increasingly work around the impact that climate change and the climate crisis has on our mental health. And mm. sometimes that's termed eco-anxiety. Mm. So I think having tools and different mediums that help initiate and platform those conversations is, is really positive. Yeah. What we do, often do is try to help people think about patterns and image much as valid knowledge production as sitting here thinking about words. Patterns emerge when we respect that we live in a relational world. More often than not, we elicit much more intriguing and interesting and creative responses I think the next stage for you is about metaphor, is about making those seemingly unconnected connections between message, metaphor, and form. Beck and Tristan are stellar collaborators. They're vocal people and people that work in a visual element. And that rapid mapping exercise really benefited me in terms of understanding intertwining and sort of weaving, you know, weaving this sort of type of yarn is something that can be that metaphor and I suppose encouraging that conversation as well. I'm really now excited to navigate these metaphors that we've kind of touched on. This one because it's a bit more coarse it's a bit um, harder to make it smaller like with the letters so they don't like touch each other it'll be right for this you can like feel the difference in in it were you searching for something when you came across like HSP um no I was just not really feeling 
like a hundred percent like good in myself I think and just like you know anxiety kind of symptoms like it's upsetting to catch yourself believing what your brain tells you and I made up my own word for it <laughs> as you do and it's called being grieved it's really just a nice way of saying like I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling depressed or like I'm just feeling grieved and you can't put a name on that feeling sometimes and that's why the griebs are born. And if people in my family or my like close circle were feeling like that or, you know, you'd sort of be like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll pick the griebs off you. Like they've, they've got to go. Like it's, a, it's giving like those feelings like a physical face and, a, and something that you can sort of confront and say, well, like I'm, I don't appreciate you sort of bogging me down. And so... I was feeling grieved a lot and so I went to a psychologist and in the first meeting she made the comment like you're a very sensitive person and I said yeah I am um, but she was talking about being a HSP and yeah it kind of just like went from there and that timing just coincided with when I was working on the Yarn 2048 Futures Map artwork for Beck and Tristan at Relative Creative and when we were making that film and when there was those climate strikes and it just made me really like reassess like how I interact with the world and understand that a bit further than what I was understanding it. My name's Rebecca Ross. I'm an artist, um, director of the Walls Art Space where we are now, which is a project I started in 2013. I'm really excited about this shift into using natural fibres and, and Melissa really understanding the, the practice behind the manufacture of what's going into her work and that deepens the sensitivity for me. The text is, I find myself needing to withdraw during busy interactions. And I've made connections with some of the words so it can be read in multiple ways. And it, obviously it's read as a sentence or sort of highlighting individual words. So find is in yellow and interactions is also going to be in yellow and they can also be read through touch, like the texture really invites you in to be intrigued about what they're trying to say. And so I think it's kind of a bit of a juxtaposition between playful and joyful colours and bright and look, looks quite cheery and maybe childlike, but then the words are, have so much more depth to them. I hope it sort of makes people stop and like second guess maybe how people put on a bit of a brave face and not talk about mental health or not talk about being more sensitive or you know not speaking up when there's comments made like oh you know like this generation is so sensitive and like harden up and why are we putting on this kind of like pretty facade what is your game plan for dealing with that high level sensitivity, particularly if it becomes a bit prohibitive for your practice? Because as an artist, your modus operandi generally is to explore and experiment and you want to be able to push that further without trying to put it into any of the own, your own kind of boxes that you're creating yeah. for the work, is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think like I'm just putting a lot of pressure on myself and I just need to trust that like what I've done now is, is enough. It's personally revealing. So perhaps that raises the stakes a bit. It's not just about the work, then it's more yeah. about you personally as well. Yes, and like maybe those parts are, are bits that I don't really know that well myself yet. I'm kind of navigating that. It's good to differentiate that you are not your work. Yes, yeah. And to have 
those quite clear boundaries and they do get blurred and a lot of us as creatives do get a, a lot of our self-worth from our work mm. but you aren't your work. So many stigmas and things in the world that we don't speak about. By Melissa making this work she's giving voice to many people beyond herself and whether you identify as highly sensitive or not I think there's certainly sentiments around this work that reflect uh, the way a lot of us have felt during recent times. This is all the blue. I don't think it's enough. One thing I really like about these works, there's these really strong statements that are delivered in a soft blow through the texture, through the approach and through the sensitive nature of that approach. You know, you want to get close to them because from a distance you see something warm and fuzzy and tactile. Mm. Um, and then you're drawn into this really intimate messaging, which is kind of a segue to talk about the activism side of things because they are like quiet protests. Like these are putting very intimate messages into the world. They're not trying to sell you a message. They're trying to approach you gently and sensitively. For me, there's an invitation to consider my own sensitivities. I showed Rebecca five artworks today. It was nice that she commented on the soft edges and how the text is very handwritten and it sort of evokes that sort of playful um, aspect. But what the text is actually saying then makes the viewer question. Going on and making these next five works will give me a real sense of resolution and that's what I'm seeking and why my anxiety levels are probably creeping up because it's half excitement but half like nervous energy. <laughs>